Hello everybody, I'm just going to wait a second so you can join me. Slightly late, I was trying to sort out the lockdown here. Don't know if anyone is having lockdown hair issues like me. I mean, it's not fun times is it? I'm, I can't wait seven weeks to get this sorted out. I've got grey hair, I've got two extensions that have fallen out. I mean, it's a dream. Hey! Hello, hello, hello everybody! Yay, welcome! So good to see so many of you today. I hope you're all good. <laughs> Suffering with lockdown hair. You don't have any. <laughs> Love it. Amazing. So good to see so many of you. Yay! So, welcome to Wellness Wednesday Live. Again, it's Wednesday. It comes around so quickly. So if you're a woman in your 30s and beyond, I am here to offer help on what to eat and drink, what to apply and even how to think so you can truly love the skin you're in and sail into your 40s and your 50s and beyond thriving. Um, so this week I really wanted to talk about hormones because let's face it, they can be little buggers <laughs> as a female especially. And there are things you might be using every single day that could be making a really big impact on your hormones right now, which can impact so many other parts of your overall health because hormones rule everything. Like women, I'm sure you agree with me, we know, don't we? Like, when when is that time, you know, you, you're a few days before before your period and it's just like, ah, and you don't realise kind of what you're actually like until someone says to you, do you know you're being a bitch? <laughs> and then you're like, okay, yeah, that's not the real me. That's, my that's the hormone me. That's not the real me. So hormones rule so much. And as we age, we really want to protect our hormones as much as humanly possible because they are so important, so important. And they start to shift a lot during the aging process. So we really need to protect them and do as much as we can to keep them in balance. So I'm just gonna run through um, what hormones actually are, because we probably all have heard the word hormone, but we're like, well, what is, what is it? So I'm gonna tell you. So a hormone is actually a chemical and it's made by these specialist cells in the body, um, usually within what is called an endocrine gland. So hormones are chemicals made in endocrine glands and they're released into the bloodstream to send a message to another part of the body. So it's often re referred to as a chemical messenger. So hormones are basically chemical messengers and their role is to provide communication, like an internal communication system in the body between cells located in like distant parts of the body. So they're fascinating, they're incredible. Their job is amazing and so unbelievably important because they send signals around the body saying, do this do this. We need you to do this now. So remember your body's main role, well, two main roles, survival, procreation. That's it. That's what your body wants to do. It wants you to survive and it wants you to make babies. So your, your number one is survival. So your hormones are constantly firing and sending these, well, are these signals that are being sent throughout the body, telling your body to do things to survive to survive. That's what they're there for. So hormones are released from one endocrine gland and then sent to another to tell that endocrine gland to produce more or less of a certain hormone. And also hormones are sent directly to an organ to tell it to do something. So hormones are incredible, incredible when, when, here's the key word, when they're balanced. So that's the key. They need to be in balance for you to be healthy. So they all work together in harmony, like an orchestra. So in an orchestra, you don't want the screechy violin in the back sending all of the other instruments off, do you? So that's what can happen if one of our hormones starts to go haywire and becomes the screechy violin. It will send this cascade effect in the body because remember, a hormone is a, is a, is a messenger, a chemical messenger that is telling another gland a lot of the time to produce another hormone, to do another thing, to do another thing, to regulate something. <laughs> so it's incredible. They're incredible basically when they are in balance, but there are so many things that can impact hormone balance. Stress, huge one. Exercise can be positive, but it can also be negative. Diet massively impacts hormones. Lifestyle, there are so many lifestyle factors that can impact your hormones. But what I wanted to give you a bit of an insight into today is chemicals in your beauty routine, because there are quite a few that act as what we call endocrine dis disruptors. So they, that endocrine system, which is all of these organs that produce those hormones, they can disrupt that. They, they're chemicals that have the ability to disrupt the balance of hormones that are so finely tuned 
within the body. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're not adding fuel to the fire, that we're not adding things in that are going to disrupt that, that fine balance um, of hormones that we need to function and to live happily. Because like we know, when hormones go out of balance, how it affects this is unbelievable. Like you ask any woman, <laughs> uh, and if you are a woman, you'll understand, like there are days when you're literally like in the pit and you're like, I don't know what is wrong with me today, but I could do all the personal development in the world, I could think positive thoughts, but I literally want to kill someone. And it's because this is massively impacted by hormones. Hormones rule our emotions a lot of the time. So we need to work from both perspectives, from this, but also making sure our body is functioning as it should, so those hormones are balanced, so this can work properly too. So, some endocrine disrupting chemicals um, act like hormone mimickers. So they basically trick our body into thinking that they're hormones, um, while others block natural hormones from doing their job, and then others can increase or decrease the levels of hormones in our body by affecting how they're made, uh, broken down or stored in the body. And finally, there are other endocrine disrupting chemicals, it's really hard to say, endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, that can change how sensitive our bodies are to different hormones. Janice, that was you yesterday, I know. Trust me, I've been there, my poor husband, sometimes I'm like, I'm sorry, I am a really nice person normally, I promise. <laughs> so these endocrine disruptors, they can mimic hormones, they can block natural hormones, they can affect the amount of hormones in our bodies, um, and they can change how sensitive we are to hormones. And we need our cells to be sensitive to hormone, ho hormones, hormones. So when you think of a cell, it has like this, um, a receptor site on it which is like a, a lock, a padlock, and only certain hormones will fit that padlock. So they, that's why it's so fascinating, like how, you know, a certain hormone does a certain thing because the receptor site is only made for that hormone. But when you get something that comes in and kind of acts like a hormone, it kind of half fits the key, but the lock, the key fits the lock kind of, but not properly. So it doesn't fully open the door, which means you're not getting the hormones into your cells that you need to make the functions that they need to make. Really, really important. So that's how they can change all of this stuff. But they can also change how sensitive our bodies are to different hormones. So we want our bodies to be sensitive. We want our cells to be sensitive to hormones so they recognise them straight away and go, ah, oh, yeah, this is what we need. We don't want like the, the key to be jamming in the, the lock and it not to be able to get in. So we really want to limit how many of these endocrine disruptors we are using every day because if our hormones are being sent high high highwire, haywire, that can cause so many issues in the body. Issues with weight management, issues with the skin, issues with fertility, issues with mood, issues with brain function, and even worse, serious illnesses. So we really want to be mindful of these things. So did you know that of the hundreds of thousands of man, well, one of the hundreds of, oh God, I can't speak today, hilarious, put my teeth in. Ah. So of the hundreds of thousands of man-made chemicals, it's estimated that about a thousand of them may have endocrine acting properties, which means they can disrupt your hormone balance, about a thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot of chemicals that could be disrupting that fine balance of hormones that we have within our body. So I'm just going to run you through some of the main ones that you really want to be mindful of. Six. I'm going to give you six to look out for. So make sure you've got your notepad and pen, and then I'd highly recommend just going and checking your skincare and your makeup products, because they're a big source of these chemicals that we could be using every single day. Now, I'm not saying using something once is going to have a dramatic impact, but if you think we're using these on a consistent basis, women, like I wear makeup every day, I use skincare every day, we're using things on a daily basis. And that's just one part of where these chemicals can come from. You've then got cleaning products, you've got environmental toxins, you've got all these other things, plastics, all these other things that act as endocrine disruptors too. And then you can start to see why they can have such a big impact when you've got this layer upon layer upon layer upon layer on the body, causing all these issues to our hormones. So, number one, some of you may have heard of this, parabens. They're much more widely um, kind of known about nowadays, parabens. And I can honestly say I didn't know any of this 12 years ago when I, well, in my 20s, I had no awareness and I was a professional dancer. I slapped so much makeup on my face 
every single day in shows and I have no idea what was in that. Like literally, I even used to have this setting spray. It was like an aerosol hairspray that we used to spray on our face because I was in the musical Starlight Express, which was hardcore. So we were constantly sweating, especially in the summer. So to keep our makeup in place, we would get this aerosol can, which was like freaking hairspray and spray it on our faces probably three times a day. Like, that's a lot of chemical crap. And not only that, like, what is that doing to your skin? Not ideal. So, and I remember people like used to spray hairspray on their skin. I'm like, do not do that. Oh my goodness. Like, and you're breathing it in as well. Your lungs are one of the most sensitive places to take in toxins. So number one, parabens, going back to what I was talking about. Um, some parabens have been linked to endocrine disruption, which may increase risks of certain illnesses. So therefore I'd really recommend not using products containing paraben. So that would include ethyl paraben, butyl paraben, isobutyl paraben, isopropyl paraben, methyl paraben, and propyl paraben. So parabens, parabens. Oh my goodness, yeah, people saying, yeah, I used to do that too. Ooh, isn't it crazy that we used to do that? Like, thank goodness for awareness and education. So please don't spray hairspray on your face, people, to keep your makeup in place. Um, so number one, parabens. Check your products for parabens. Number two, phthalates. It's a hard one to say. So it's spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, -P -H -H -E phthalates. So phthalates, so there's one called DBP and DMP and then DEP, are plasticizing ingredients that are commonly used in fragrances as a kind of solvent and also a skin fixative. And they've been linked to in endocrine disruption too. So number one, parabens. Number two, phthalates. Number three, these are really hard to say. And unfortunately, the problem is sometimes on packaging, it's not clear. I'm gonna talk about that in one second. So you've got butylated hydroxytoluene. Butylated hydroxytoluene, try saying that a few times. And then butylated hydroxyanisol. For short, BHT and BHA, they kind of fall under the same bracket. So they're petroleum derived antioxidants that are used to extend the shelf life of a product. Um, and they can cause a bit of an allergic reaction in the skin anyway, so probably not ideal to be using, but they're also likely carcinogens and hormone disruptors. So again, you don't wanna be using them. Um, what you'll find is a lot of these that I'm mentioning are preservatives. They're there to keep a product uh, from spoiling and, and gaining bacteria, which is really important. You don't want to be putting stuff on your skin that's loaded with bacteria that's been growing in it. That's not ideal at all. But there are so many better alternatives nowadays that aren't these endocrine disruptors that can still preserve products. So that's what you want to be looking for and that's what you want to be using. So parabens, phthalates, BHT and BHA. How are they allowed? I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It really is. And... It, it, it's because, again, people have different ideas of what they deem to be safe. And it depends where the research has been done on certain things. But the great thing is people are becoming a lot more aware. And like I said, a lot of the time it's to do with exposure. So it, like I said, it's not that if you use something once, it's going to cause dramatic impact. But it's the prolonged use over time and the amount that we're using on a daily basis. Because some products may have low, low levels of these things in them. But that doesn't mean to say over time the accumulation doesn't make a difference. So we just want to really protect ourselves and make sure that we're not adding, like I said at the beginning, fuel to the fire. So number four is synthetic fragrances and dyes. So many are petroleum derived and petroleum is a byproduct of the petro well, no, that's mineral. Mineral is a byproduct of the petroleum industry. Petroleum petrol basically. So many synthetic fragrances and dyes come from petroleum and they may contain components which are potentially hormone disrupting um, and environmental toxins, and they can also really irritate the skin. So again, bit of a double whammy, not great. Um, yes, exactly, loose. Unfortunately, we live in a reactive rather than a proactive health society. Totally agree with that, but we can change that. We're on a mission to change that. So number four, synthetic dyes and fragrances. Number five, formaldehyde donating preservatives. So formaldehyde is a, a new... A, <laughs> I really can't talk today, this is hilarious. <sighs> Breathe. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen that is also linked to asthma and developmental toxicity. And in cosmetics and skincare, it may be in a low form, so they don't use like masses of it. So not a huge exposure, but again, like I said, used every day and depending on how many products you're using that contain it, things may add up. So it's used actually a lot um, in nail hardeners. Ah, thanks Luce. So yeah, it's used a lot in nail hardeners. So I'm sure we've all used those little, you know, 
nail varnishy things. <laughs> Can't even think of what the word is. Uh, you can tell I haven't. I mean, look at the state of those. Um, lockdown nails, lockdown hair. The, the self care has gone down big time. Um, so, yeah, nail hardeners often contain it. So hardening your nails, probably not good for you. And I think, again, we think of our nails as like these hard little things, but they absorb. Things absorb through your nails just as they absorb through your skin. And not everything that we put on can absorb through our skin. And there's a big myth around this saying, anything put onto your screen, your, <laughs> your screen, <laughs> anything put onto your skin, holy crap. Anything put onto your skin gets into your bloodstream within 16 seconds. That's not theoretically true because there are some things that are chemically too large to go through the skin and into the body. But there are other chemicals that do have that, that capability of absorbing through because the molecular structure of them is small enough to penetrate through. And over time that could accumulate in the body. So just to kind of uncover that little myth. Um, so formaldehyde donating preservatives, don't really want to be using that. Get rid of the nail hardeners if they've got it in. Um, it's not typically used, the problem is it's not typically used in its pure form, but altered. And that means reading it on a label is quite hard because you won't see it saying formaldehyde or formaldehyde donating preservatives. It won't say that on the label, unfortunately. It might say formalin, so you can look for that, but it's difficult to know because listings and the way things are written on labels is really quite challenging sometimes, which is a shame. And finally, number six. So just to recap, we've got parabens, phthalates, BHT and BHA, synthetic dyes and fragrances, formaldehyde donating preservatives, and number six, aluminium in your antiperspirants. Now I know that's not like a beauty product as such, but in a way it is because, you know, we don't want to walk around stinking. So antiperspirants, what they're there to do is they're there to stop you sweating. So there's a difference between, difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Antiperspirant, antiperspire, stop you sweating. So what they do is they basically block your sweat glands. Now, do you maybe think that we sweat for a reason? I think so. We sweat to release toxins out of the body. That's one of the biggest purposes of sweating, to release crap out. Like our skin is a detoxification organ. So when we're putting on things that stop that capacity, it's not really ideal, is it? Like when you really logically think about it, it's probably not the best thing to be doing. We don't want to be blocking so we can't get things out. So aluminium based compounds are used as the active ingredient in antiperspirants. And they basically are like a temporary plug within the sweat duct that stops the flow of sweat to the skin surface. So some research suggests that aluminium containing um, under, underarm, <laughs> underarm antiperspirants, I'm gonna start talking very slow because apparently I can't talk anymore, hilarious. Um, so research, some research has suggested that aluminium containing underarm antiperspirants, which are applied frequently and left on the skin near the breasts, obviously for women, may be absorbed through the skin and have an estrogen-like hormonal effect, which is not good news. So again, that's an endocrine disruptor. It's something that's mimicking estrogen in your body and causing a rise in estrogen, and that is not good. We don't want this massive surge of estrogen in our bodies. We want it to be in balance. So I hope that's been really helpful. So just to recap, those six ones of those thousand man-made chemicals that we wanna be really mindful of, parabens, phthalates, butylated hydroxytoluene, uh, or butylated hydroxyanisole, BHT or BHA, synthetic dyes and fragrances, formaldehyde donating preservatives, and aluminium in your antiperspirants. So make a little list of those. Make sure that you're not using them if you want to age gracefully and healthily and beautifully, because this is the thing, like, if we think about it, like I'm all about healthy aging and that's what I love working with women on. And unfortunately, what a lot of us are doing is through our beauty regimes and in that quest for healthy aging, we're actually doing more harm than good because hormones rule how we age as well. So we really wanna make sure that we're supporting that fine hormone balance. So um, that's everything for today, guys. I hope that's been really helpful. If you have any questions or you need some help with your beauty regime, then please do feel free to to pop me a little message because this is my this is my bag this is my forte i love helping people sort their skincare routine out sort their makeup routine out and really make sure that they're putting the good things in that aren't doing any harm um, but not compromising on results because let's face it we all want to use products that are great and that work and that we feel are doing good for us and we notice a difference with 
but there's this fine balance, you know, and I think a lot of the time we're in this kind of quandary at the moment. Yeah, men, men do need this info too, absolutely, Joe. Um, but we're in this quandary where it's like, right, well, I either go for the, like, slap a bit of coconut oil on my face, which, it, you know, there's nothing in there that's damaging. However, probably not. I don't want to be like a greasy pit on my face and it's not really actually doing that much good. It's not going to have any, you know, really beneficial properties with regards to how my skin is aging and it can actually clog the pores quite a lot as well. So you've either got that or you've got the real chemical, like a, I like to call it the chemical, chem chemical shitstorm over here, which works. You see great results. However, long term side effects, not great. So it's about marrying these two to find the mid ground, things that work that don't contain the crap, the chemical shitstorm. And there are, like I use them every single day of my life. So there are products out there that are this place. So if you need help with that, then please feel free to reach out to me. More than happy to do a bit of a consultation where we can sit down together and, you know, sort out your, your beauty routine and your makeup routine and make you feel and look fabulous. So thank you so much, everybody. Take care, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And if you're in the UK, enjoy this glimmer of sunshine that we've got. It's making me happy. I feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.